Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of our Design Thinking for Education series. This episode is on Think Aloud testing. I'm Debbie Pixton. What is Think Aloud testing? Think Aloud testing is a strategy to gather information about what people think as they go through a process or use a product. Information is gathered by asking a participant to verbally articulate their thoughts as they complete a series of actions. The goal here is to help identify obstacles or flaws in a design. You may be familiar with a version of Think Aloud testing called usability testing. It's common in the fields of information technology and engineering, where there is a website, a device, or another object that a person will be expected to use. Think Aloud testing is broader than those applications. You can also use Think Aloud testing for things like planning an event, designing a space, creating a game, or even writing instructions. In considering the design cycle, it likely does not surprise you that Think Aloud testing is used in the testing phase. Why conduct a Think Aloud test? Think Aloud tests allow you to identify usability issues. For example, can a website user find the email address for the person they need to contact to sign up for a class? Understand usage beyond what the designers know or would experience because of their experience with a product or process. Often designers have so much specialized knowledge that they can no longer behave as though they don't have that knowledge. Participants in a Think Aloud test represent people likely to use your product or participate in your experience. Think Aloud testing also allows you to determine the compatibility between a user's expectations and your product or process's likelihood of meeting those expectations as it's designed. Much of the frustration people encounter is because their expectations for a product or experience aren't met. Think Aloud testing allows you to uncover those expectations and determine if you are meeting them in a positive way. How do you conduct a Think Aloud test? First, identify what you are going to test and what you are trying to learn. Then, develop the questions or actions you want your participants to complete to give you the information you seek. As you develop these questions or actions, make sure that they will give you usable information and that they are not so all-encompassing that the participants are giving you hours of time to complete the test. Third, determine who represents the audience you want to learn from based on the users you will have. You'll want to have people who represent all kinds of major stakeholders that use your product or participate in your process. Based on your criteria, recruit six to nine participants for the test. You'll then need to arrange for an appropriate location and equipment, as well as a date and time for the test. Finally, conduct the test. For consistency's sake, we recommend using a script for the introduction to keep your tests comparable. You'll want to have the participant complete a release form for you to have documentation so that you can use notes or a recording with others in the work. Be sure to make your participant feel comfortable and help them relax as much as possible so that they can give you accurate information. Remind them, they are not being tested and there are no right or wrong answers. Throughout the test, be sure to ask clarifying questions only. You will skew your results by talking, providing demonstrations, or sharing your opinion. And, as always, listen carefully and take good notes. Let's take a look at an example of a Think Aloud test in progress. In this scenario, we've already developed our product, a new website, and we've recruited a group of participants who represent all of our primary stakeholder groups. Here, one of our participants has joined us at a location where we have a computer set up in a room to test the website in a desktop format. The room is quiet, there are no distractions, and we have plenty of time to complete the test. We'll say that our mobile website users will be in a different test group. The participant here has already begun the first task, as prompted by the tester, after having been briefed on the purpose of this test and signing the release form. Fortunately, this participant is excellent at articulating both what's seen, what is appealing, and what action he will take. The test becomes more valuable when the participant indicates he is uncertain. By stating that he will click a link, and then it doesn't work, he's provided the tester and the designers with not only an issue, a dead link, but also with the information that there could be more clarity about whatever it was he was asked to do. As with most design methods, Think Aloud testing can be done in person or virtually. However, it's important to think through your goals and needs before deciding which format will work best. 
For example, do you have a specific space that your test needs to be done in, like testing a model setup of a store? Is there a physical device that you need to be able to watch your participants use, like a new controller for a video game or a polling device? Do other people need to be able to observe the test taking place, or are there other particular gathering space or physical accommodations? If your answer to any of these questions is yes, you need to conduct your testing in person. You should also consider, do you and your participants have strong internet and video conferencing access? Is it acceptable not to see the body language of your participant? And are your protocols more relaxed and not in need of scientific validity? If your answer to these questions is yes, you can consider a virtual option that works for you and your participants. Regardless of whether you are testing in person or virtually, you will need a way to share what you are testing with participants, a place for both the tester and the participant to be uninterrupted for the duration of the test, a mechanism for capturing the release information from the participant, a way to record your notes, clear questions or prompts for the participant to respond to, and a way to thank your participants. Additionally, if you are in person, you will need a physical space based on what's being tested, working tools for a test, which might include a computer, internet, mouse and keyboard, or a mobile device, and a note-taking device. If you are virtual, you will need Zoom or another video conferencing tool, the ability to audio or video record, and a device for the tester and one for the participant. Now for some tips and tricks. First, some do's and don'ts. Do be clear on your participant criteria to make sure you select a representative group of users to test your site. Do remind participants that they are not being tested and that there are no right or wrong answers and do share feedback with your team so that you can enhance your product or your process. Don't conduct demonstrations as they will skew your results. Don't promise any solutions on the spot as your development team will need to be involved in those decisions. Don't make the requirements for participating in the user group stricter than necessary. And don't plan to watch entire replays of the tests. It's not the best use of your time. If you are looking for a sample script, release form, sentence starters for when your testers get stuck, or to watch a demonstration of a Think Aloud test, you may want to check out the free resources from Steve Kruth, especially if your Think Aloud tests will be done in a website usability test type situation. To review, Think Aloud testing is an inexpensive, robust, flexible, easy to learn, and convincing testing method. It's designed to help you make improvements on what you have. It is not a statistically significant source of data, and it can be easily influenced based on the tester and from one tester to the next. So be sure to take that into consideration. Thanks for watching.